Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and my guest today is Dr. Kurt Steinberg, who's the uh, president of Montserrat College of Art here in Beverly. Kurt, welcome. Thank you. Great to be back. Uh, yeah, uh, and the reason that Kurt says that is that he's been my guest on the show a number of different times. We've talked about COVID and how the school was dealing with COVID and so forth. Uh, and let, let's just, before we get into the, the topic of today's conversation, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about that. So you've just weathered two plus years of, of, of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, you took over about four years ago and then you know, shortly after that, you had to deal with it. So, how yeah. how is the school? Anything? Any changes? How did the school deal with that? How? Uh, what, what what's the end result of all of that COVID stuff? So, I think, um, yeah, I think we're still getting through that. I mean, most nonprofits, I think, are 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 dealing with it still. Um, but for us overall, uh, you know, we didn't have transmission on campus. Uh, knock on wood. Yeah, uh, we we're very happy about that. Um, you know, obviously we had positive cases like like any place else, but um, you know we made sure that we were good citizens in Beverly and did what we needed to do. And our community, you know, continues to wear masks and to do those things because that's a choice that the community has made, and right. I'm going to honor that. Um, and you know, we have some really robust summer programs coming up. I think people still want to get back to it. We're welcoming our first group of art educators this weekend, um, and we'll do that for two weeks. And then we have a, a pretty good group of pre-college high school students coming to campus, and then we've got the middle schooler camps. And what is do. this art educators thing? What's that about? Yeah, so we, we do, um, you know, art educators or art teachers in the right. K through 12 space. Uh, don't get a lot of time to do their own art and their own practice, oh, oh. you know, because they're busy. Yeah, teaching, doing the teaching, <laughs> and uh, and they're pretty exhausted by the time they get yeah. to the weekend of the home. So we uh, expanded it to two weeks this year, where they come on campus, live there, and we give them an opportunity to take classes and stuff that they want to learn about, but also to explore their own art making and yeah. just. Uh, get a break and to do the things that really drive them and recharge their batteries. So they can kind of get uh, classes from each other, sort of. Is that yeah, it's yeah. a cohort. We also bring some of our professors. We'll teach some classes yeah. in acoustic and other techniques that yeah. they're interested in. And then one of the things we also added, which I think is really important because we get uh, art teachers from all over the country uh, coming, and some of them haven't been to Beverly or the North Shore before, is uh, each Wednesday of the two weeks we're going to uh, suspend classes, and they're, we're going to take them on tours of all the great things that we know and love around the North Shore, and, and they get and to see those things. Which there are a lot of, right? right? Yeah. And um, we're going to take them around and introduce them to how what a great place it is that we So live. these folks are from not from this area, then, obviously. Some of them. Some and, then, of them uh, and then we have a bunch that come from places like North Carolina, Texas, ah, okay. Florida, yeah. Arkansas, a Virginia. Lot of beautiful things to see up yeah. here on the North Shore. Absolutely. Right yeah, okay, good. Well, thank you for that, for that update. Yep. Uh, what we want to talk about today uh, is something that the, the school is, is now considering, and, and uh, you've got proposals uh, going, is you're going to install solar panels yes. on, on campus. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my understanding is that uh, uh, you have, uh, this is something I didn't know, you, you have 18 different campus buildings, yes. right, that are part of the campus yep. situation. And you're going to be putting solar panels on eight of, yes. of those. Correct? Now of maybe uh, Zach in the control room, could you, could you put up the Hardy building uh, image for us? Uh, and um, yeah, there you go. yeah. And uh, Kurt, tell us this is the main the main campus building, right? This is the yeah. so-called Hardy Building, which is kitty corner from the library and right next to the uh, uh, to the Beverly Common, correct? Right. Exactly. Yeah, and that that's where the, the most of your activities and the, the darker images there. Uh, don't let the, don't be fooled, viewers. Those are not installed. That's just an right. artist's rendering of what. Right. The, the the panels will look like once they're on the Hardy building. And and if we could have the second Hardy building, okay, and that's just a slightly different angle uh, of, of those panels. Mm -hmm. um, and um, my inner, uh, uh, so you will also have, let, let's, let's get the third slide up of the campus building. So now, uh, in addition to the, um, uh, the Hardy building, 
uh, some of the major ones are going to be at the Student Village dorm, which are 26 Essex, which is right opposite the library. So that would be right. that would be like uh, 13, right across, 14, 15, right? Yeah, in, in and that's right across. Yeah, right across the street. So two is as the Hardy Building, right? And it's right across the street from the Hardy Building. Yeah, yeah. And then 301 Cabot Street. So with the Hardy Building, the Student Dorm Complex, and 301 Cabot Street. My understanding is that will 80% of the installation will be on those three buildings, correct? I'd say, yeah, and, and, and when we say 80% uh, installation, it's really 80% of the total megawatts that will be produced on a yearly basis. Right. Will come from, from three, three buildings. Yeah, and you're, and you're going to be, uh, I, my understanding is that your, your capacity will generate most of the energy needed by your total, total buildings on campus, correct? Yeah, what we're, what we're going to do is we'll generate about 240 megawatts right. per year. And so that people kind of understand what that means, it's equivalent to about 24 homes Right in the city of Beverly. Right, uh, based on average consumption. Right, and um, it also is equivalent from a CO2 uh, reduction standpoint. It's uh, equivalent to about uh, 2,800 uh, trees being Actually, planted. In, in plant, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to fax check you on that, okay? Yeah. Because uh, the 200, and it's actually a 244 uh, um, megawatt system. Yep. And I have a 10. Uh, right. <laughs> on my house, yeah. uh, and so if you divide the the ten into two hundred forty four, you get twenty four, which which proves out your number. So right. I, as, as a homeowner, I put on panels about four years ago, and I have a uh, my rated capacity is about nine thousand seven hundred fifty kilowatts. Right. So right around ten thousand, and that's an, an average home, three bedroom home. Correct. So uh, yeah. Um, now. Uh, you, you you still need um, at this point. It's uh, um, well. We'll talk about the timeline, right? But you sure. still need some approvals, right? I understand right. that the Hardy Building needs approval from um, the the Historic Commission. Tell us why that's so. Yeah. So when um, the college uh, purchased uh, the Hardy Building uh, from the city, uh, we um, uh, entered into an agreement uh, where we could. You know, do different things on the inside of the building, but the facade, the roof, anything on the outside, uh, we had to go to the, and we have always when, we, when we've done this, gone to the, the Historic Commission uh, to review the plan and to get uh, permission to do that. So when we put our new signs on this year, for example, uh, on the side that faces the common and then the one that faces um, uh, Essex, um, we did. We had to get those those signs approved, and we had to go over the penetrations that would have to be made into the historic facade of the of, yeah. of the building. But but but. Uh, so for the same reason, we have to do yeah. do that with. So the, this is uh, this is on the roof. So you're not doing anything with the facade. Nothing with the roof. facade and the 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 panels themselves. We had a preliminary meeting with the historic commission just to end planning. Yeah. Just to get some idea about what they might be looking for, so we could. Uh, you know, make sure that we're being accommodating right from the beginning of the planning stages. And so uh, what we tried to do, and they didn't say anything about this, but I really wanted to limit the visual impact on the Beverly Common side. Mm -hmm. And so if you look, looked at the, the let's, examples. Let's, let's put one of those up again, Zach, if you could yeah. put number two up again. Uh, okay. Yeah, and if you look at that, the, yeah. uh, the array... Is, the, are, is on the opposite right. side. So, so the common, and this yeah. picture is up in the upper right there, right. So, so there's really no panels uh, f f uh, facing that way. Facing right. the, the, the common. Yeah. Uh, two great things is actually the biggest sun exposure is actually on the opposite side away from the common. So it works out. So we are, it, yeah, so we are maximizing. We could put on the other ones, but it's, it's diminishing returns when we start to put it on the other uh, areas. But it... Uh, I wanted to make sure that visually we weren't impacting yeah. the common. So as far as what the your your preliminary meetings with the historic commission, you don't see any 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 gotchas here because you're. Uh, uh, we we've tried our best not to, yeah. and and they've been very upfront and honest about what we needed to worry about. Uh, we talked with planning. We also met with the mayor ahead of time to let him know what we were doing, and we got their feedback. And we're trying to incorporate that feedback into the uh, engineering plans. That will be the official submission, uh, probably. At, we're hoping in the next few weeks. Okay. 
Okay. Now you've uh, we'll we'll talk about the timeline in a second. Yeah. But you've you've hired a company called Invalion. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Invalion. Invalion yep. Technologies. Right. So who are they, and how did you pick them? Sure. We went through um, a company called Bridge Energy um, that acts as a uh, a consultant. Uh, they only get paid if we end up with a project with that's the, yeah. viable. Um, and they have the expertise, and what they did is they put together a, a request for proposal. Um, they did a survey of our buildings, kind of understood what the size potential was for the project, and then put it out to bid. We had uh, three uh, bidders, mm -hmm. um, and then Bridge Energy helped us evaluate those, and then we did interviews, and then we did best and final offers, and then ended up uh, uh, giving Invalia on the contract. Okay. So it was a competitive process. Right. So this is a, a complete turnkey thing with Invalia. They're going to pick the panels. They're going to they're going to install them. They're going to do that everything. was part of their proposal, and that's what uh, was uh, evaluated. When yeah, we and that would probably be attractive to you, so Absolutely. you can you just get the final. And then product. also the financial deal um, was also part of. Yeah. Part now of let's it. talk about that. Now this is uh, uh, you're going to you're going to be borrowing uh, roughly uh, a half a million dollars yes. to do the actual installation. Yeah. So right? we'll own it. Um, you'll you'll from own day it, one. and you'll do that in a section. But you're also tell us about you're getting something from uh, a Massachusetts. Grant, so that'll help yeah. you cover. So tell us about that. So the Massachusetts grant, which is great, and, and Bridge helped us sort of identify uh, that, will actually um, help us pay the debt service associated with that loan. Yeah. So we will uh, not have to use any of our own operating funds or funds from tuition and fee revenue wow. um, to to pay for that for that debt service. So it's a separate little financial thing on the side that doesn't impact your operations? Correct, your and it budget. doesn't impact the cost of education yeah. for the students either. Yeah, and uh, so now, how long, a, how long a payback period is, have you uh, agreed so on? So I believe, uh, I, so we're looking at it as a sort of 20 to 25 year out, uh -huh. and um, the, uh, the $500,000 loan has a 10 year Lifespan, so we'll we'll have that paid off in ten years, mm -hmm. um, but the the grant will actually uh, make that happen uh, yeah. for us. So they we use that money to pay the pay the debt service. Right now, has has uh, Montserrat been thinking about solar panels um, for a while now? What what yeah. what what was the impetus for for doing it now? Right. So when I first got to campus, it was one of the things that I saw. I wanted us to be more sustainable. I wanted us to uh, actually worry and talk about what we can do to reduce our carbon footprint. The college itself had done a bunch of things with, um, with trash and also how we were handling certain chemicals on campus through you know, our design processes that we do. Uh, I had talked about sustainable uh, practices within the classroom and also just energy in general, like the normal things that you would do, energy audits, they'd done all those things. Um, all that is sort of nipping at the edges. And I wanted, I, I thought to myself, if we can make solar panels happen, because again, as you said, we have all these buildings, let's evaluate them and see if we put, in this case, we put eight buildings together, um, can we make a real dent and a real difference? And uh, we found out obviously that we could when we did this. So we've been working on this actually for about three years. Mm -hmm. um, we started with one other group it wasn't quite the financial or the environmental impact that we were looking for based on the initial evaluation. So we took a pause and then found Bridge Energy, um, which has done some work on the North Shore quite a bit. And Invalion is actually, a, 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 a does a lot of work on the North Shore as well. Yeah, so. and Bridge, Bridge is, uh, they're, they're, they were consulting with you to help you pick the- Correct, uh, uh, correct. and to make sure that we were uh, putting together a deal that, um, uh, maximize the environmental impact okay. that we were looking so for. So are they more from the financial aspect or from the technical aspect? Both. Of, uh, both. They have the expertise to evaluate those things to make sure that whatever we agreed to was completely doable and that the promises that were being made by the company were real. Yeah. Now, uh, now just, uh, I meant to ask you this in the beginning. So how many students uh, are uh, does, does Montserrat have uh, these days? So we have about 400 students. 400. Mm -hmm. And it's a four-year program. Yes. Most of them uh, go through and Correct. they get a bachelor of... Bachelor's of Fine Arts. Bachelor's of, uh, bachelor's of Fine Arts. Uh, and and your, what, what is your graduation rate? So our graduation rate um, has actually been edging up. We're in the 60% space now, uh, okay. which is up. 
uh, from a few years ago when it was mm -hmm. in the 50s. We had actually our largest graduating class ever in the 50-year history of the college wow. was this past uh, 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 early June. Uh, so we're excited about that. And yeah. um, our retention rate has actually gone up. We have, before COVID, we had an average retention rate of uh, 84%, which is really, really good. We're actually at 92% now. Um, so we're And retention rate that. specifically measures, measures what? It measures um, uh, freshman to sophomore and sophomore to junior. And then you'll even look at junior to senior okay. of students staying um, okay. so and, um, and persisting through. So, so most schools, uh, so there are other schools uh, in the North Shore space that their retention rates are in the 60% space. Yeah. Um, so in comparison, we're yeah. pretty excited about that. Yeah, yeah. Now let, let's talk a little bit about the, the timeline here. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you've picked uh, in, in Valion and um, so what, and you're waiting, you're going to put, you said in a couple of weeks, you're going to put together your final proposal yeah. and you're waiting to hear from the Historic Commission. So, so tell us, what, what are the, the steps, what has to happen? So the steps now? that have to happen in, Val in Valion through the contract is completely responsible for the permitting process okay. and getting the approvals. The approvals, as I understand it, are three major areas of approval. Two of them are municipal and then one of them's um, uh, the uh, uh, the electric grid? the electric National provider right, right yeah. so the um, so they have to go to those two places so we have to go to Mass Historic just for the Hardy Building and then we have to go to the city to get the entire project uh, over the eight buildings permitted okay um, and so what Invalion is doing is preparing all the documents for that there's engineering that has to be done. Um, and they have to show the specifics, you okay. know, the construction drawings for it as well. Okay. Uh, and then those things, that same package gets submitted to National Grid, and then they have to then go through their process, which is uh, set out by, by Commonwealth of Massachusetts statute. All right. So in Valion, they're, they're your front. They, they're, 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 rep yep. they're representing you to the city, to the Historic right. Commission, to National. To and they national. don't get any money or get paid unless this Until gets, thing is, uh, it's unless it actually gets permitted. Yeah, yeah. So their incentive is to, you know, to get the process and do it the right way. Yeah. Now, are there other uh, uh, colleges, universities in, in the area here that have gone solar, have done solar? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Endicott College has done a lot of investment yeah. in that space. Yeah. And actually, I think just recently got a new, uh, new project approved. So yeah. um, I think in Beverly, you've got both colleges um, really dedicated to, yeah. to making a difference in yeah. their environmental impact. And is Salem State... Um, and I probably they are too. I'm just not as familiar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, getting back to the so the timeline. So if if uh, what, what what are the steps and tell us when they they might start. We might start seeing panels being being. Yeah, my up. hope is that um, once you get through all that, which you have some control over, but not a lot, um, is once that's all done. Um, my hope is that construction starts late summer, early fall. Mm -hmm. um, we have a conservative in the budget, right? We have a conservative estimate of seeing the impact uh, in January. My hope is that we flip the switch on the system way before that, but mm -hmm. uh, you never know what happens. So we've done that. We'll actually be cash flow positive as soon as they switch the system on. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, because you're, you're, you, yeah, because you're... Because of the incentives, the incentives and yeah. the way the financing has been done. Yeah. And the fact that we're generating so much of the energy we're consuming. Yeah. So, so, and in, in, uh, give us the big picture, Kurt, now about you know mm -hmm. the, the 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 importance of this to Montserrat, yeah. the importance to the city, and being a good uh, a good green eco yeah. ecologically, um, you know, sustainable um, a constituent, <laughs> yeah. if you will. So, tell us about that. I think um, the first thing that I really want to say is um, I want to give Mayor Cahill a lot of credit because I think is a uh, people know he's been talking about he's environmental um, improvements and being responsible uh, in, in climate change and all those things have really been, I think, points that he brings up over and over again anytime right. you're with him. Yeah, he's been at the forefront of right, that. Right, absolutely. absolutely. And you see what he's been <coughs> able to do with Beverly Public Schools, <laughs> with the buses and also municipal vehicles. And right. he himself is, uh, uh, you know, with, with the municipality, 
they're looking at uh, more uh, solar panels and arrays wherever they can put them. Uh, and I think encouraging, um, you know, citizens to also adopt it in, yeah. in, on their homes. Yeah. So, and of course, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, but of yeah, course yeah. we have that big installation opposite the North Shore Music Theater there. Absolutely. So that that's, that's speaks right. volumes. You know, it. so taking that cue, you know, when I initially, you know, met him when I first got here, realized that this was something that there was uh, real buy-in uh, from, from the city. So I knew that that wasn't going to be uh, a place where I had to convince anybody that this was the right thing to do when we had the project. So they've been incredibly good partners and been really, really uh, helpful uh, in assisting us go through this process. As far as the, the school is concerned, it's a really great opportunity because our students and prospective students are increasingly interested in challenging us to do better when it comes to responding to climate change, but also being um, really responsible with our own carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. And so this is a huge leap forward for us. Um, and I know the students, staff and faculty, when we finally announced that this was a done deal, pending the approvals and all that process. Um, lots of excitement about that. Yeah. Really, I think, proud that we were doing it. And what I'm hoping to do also is use it as a teaching tool. I think, you know, we have general education, and liberal arts and science um, requirements. And so putting that into the curriculum and having it being a living lab and demonstration project for everybody, I think, is really yeah. important, too. Well, you mentioned that, that, that students express that concern. How, how do they? How do they actually express that concern to you? Is like when they when they apply, do they ask you questions specifically no. regarding to that, or how? No, that I think um, there's indirect and direct sort of ways. Like yeah. when I'm having sort of forums with our students or faculty and stuff, they might bring it up and say, "Hey, what are we doing about this?" And you know, I'm concerned about you know um, carbon footprint and in general, what is Montserrat doing? And so we have those conversations there. When we're recruiting, um, it is something that actually does come up now and then where prospective students will, will ask, I'm, I wanna go to this school, what, are they, what is yeah. the thought process around sustainability and, yeah. and being green? Yeah. So it is something that is important to people. And I think what'll be good is when we bring people around for tours and they actually see the physical yeah, manifestation yeah. of this, um, it's more than just a verbal commitment. They see sure. the physical evidence that we're serious about um, about being good environmental citizens. Yeah, no, that that's phenomenal. Now, so uh, uh, we have just a few minutes left. What uh, anything else you want to uh, you want to end with here about about Montserrat and about your commitment to uh, re uh, renewable energy? Well, one thing I do want to say is a is a, a big plus on the vendor that we ended up picking. Yeah. And Valion um, is also contributing a whole array uh, for free, which is a yeah, $25,000 value. Yeah, I didn't, I saw yeah. I didn't re, uh, So ask about on, that. on one of our buildings, Dane Street, there's yep. a $25,000 array that they're donating uh, to the college. So that's not something we had to uh -huh. finance. And then they're also establishing an endowment, an endowment. Uh, scholarship of $25,000. Uh, so a total um, of $50,000 worth of value to the yeah. college. So, so they, we're really excited about so that. So they kind of sweetened their bid by doing, did, did any of the other? No, this was actually after the bid was made. So Really? Yeah, this was not part of their bid package. This is something they came to the table with uh, afterwards. Wow. Which I, I, you know, credit to them. It wasn't about, yeah, their, that's like, wasn't about the business for them. It was actually about philanthropy. The, and they, I think they really liked what we were doing once they got to know who we were. That really puts the cherry on top. Yeah, it does. It? Yeah. <laughs> well, very, very good. Well, um, Dr. Steinberg, Kurt, it's good to have you in the in the studio again, okay. uh, and um, congratulations on this on this wonderful project. Great. Thank you, Walt. And I'd like to uh, remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.